So chapter 2. Motion in one dimension. Motion in one dimension. Right. We finished chapter one, which was about measurements. And now we start the real physics here. The first chapter of physics is motion. Motion, but in one dimension. Remember, an object moves in a space, in a three dimension. But here we are limiting the motion to one dimension. And then we, uh, uh, later on, we take motion two and a three dimension, but we start with a simple one, motion in one dimension. <laughs> Why we study motion? Remember the definitions of physics? Yes. Science of uh, and energy, yeah. matter and energy. And one form of energy is that kinetic energy, motion. Yes. So to under understand physics, you have to uh, learn uh, how to uh, describe motion, how to deal with motion in space, and knowing all the parameters about motion. Right. What does it mean motion in one dimension? Uh, it means motion on a straight line first, not curved, straight. And since it's motion in one dimension, it's not necessarily means you are moving horizontally. This is motion in one dimension. Or you could move up and down, yeah? Motion in one dimension. So you could move on the x, or you could move on the, or you could move this way. This is motion in one, but you can think of its motion in two dimensions, and three dimensions as well, yeah? But as long as it's on a straight line, don't complicate it. Think of it as motion in one, Dimension, because it's on a motion of straight line. Motion of straight line. So we want to describe an object moving on one dimension. Now, the first thing we have to talk about is what we call position or location. Position or location, yeah? Now, if I ask you this question, like ask, as, what's, what is your position, the student? See, if I we ask her, what's your position? What's that? First row. She's saying first row. Okay. What is your position? Second row. Okay. Try to think of another way to describe your position. What is your position, Zain? Between these two, two students. What's your position? No, I'm not saying what is your status. What is your position as a location? Okay. Yeah. So what is your what is your position? Fifth from where? From the first row. Yeah. Can you see that when I ask you what's your position, you always refer to a reference. So when I asked her what's your position, she said fifth from the first row. And the student here, she said, I'm between those two. So reference to something else, yeah? So when you want to describe position, what the first thing you need is a reference to refer to, okay? A reference point. Now let's take an object moving on the x-axis to make it easy. So this is where the object moves, on this line, straight line. Now when I say what's the position of the object when it's here, I cannot describe the position here without knowing where is the reference. And the reference usually is someone observing, like if I want to know what's your position, 
That's relative to me, to my eye. So I'm the reference or the computer. What's the position of the computer relative to me? So I'm the observer, the one who's taking the measurement. So where is the observer? Let's say the observer here. And this is what we call reference point. Okay. So the reference point has a location or the position. We call it the, because it's a reference, we call it zero. The start of measuring position. So if to start with the object is here at this position, I can call this position x1. And what is this x1? A position relative to zero. Right. What if the object is here at this position x2? It has a position relative to zero. But what happens if those two are the same? Can you distinguish between this position and this position? No, the same? Yeah? So what we have to do, we have to distinguish between right and left. So we say this side is positive and this side is negative, right and left. Okay. So the position could be on the right of the reference or left of the reference. If it's on the right, the position is positive. If it's on the left, negative. So this is about position only. And the symbol we give for position or location is x. And position, you can define it as a distance from the reference to the point. But the shortest distance is not like... Straight, shortest. Now, according to this definition, the position could be positive or? So position x could be positive, negative, or zero. Anything. Now, if I have an, how do I know an object is moving? What happens? I'm an object moving now, yeah? How, how do you know I'm moving? What happens? I am, I am changing what? Position. Because there's a change in position, you can tell there's a, the object is. So what's the difference between position and change in position? Change means delta. So if you say initial f position is x1. Final position is x2. So initially you were here. And finally you are here. What happens? You change your position. How much is the change in position? X1 minus x2. It's delta x, yeah? And delta x, be careful here, it's the final minus initial. So x2 minus x1. x2 minus x1, delta x. This delta x, what we call it? Change in position. Delta x, not x. There is another name for delta x, two names, or two terms. Either you call it change in position, or you call it displacement. Displacement. Change in position, we call it this displacement. What does it mean, the word displacement? And what's the difference between the word distance and Displacement. You have to know the difference between them. Displacement is the word used to give you the shortest distance between two points. Look, this is position one, position. What's the shortest distance between them? Straight line. And this is what we call it displacement, delta x. But of course, displacement points to the final. If this is initial, this is final, the tail is here, the head is here. You're going this way. 
delta x, displacement. Hmm? But if it happens, no, you start at 2, you finish at 1. Which way is your displacement? Pointing to the right, yeah? But it's the shortest as well. So it means here you have to take in consideration the sign of delta x. Delta x from 1 to 2 is not the same as delta x from 2. What's the difference? The direction. But the value is the same. The value is the same. But the direction is different. Sometimes you point to the right or to the left. So anyway, so displacement means the shortest distance between two point. But distance between two points not necessarily means the shortest. What's the distance between this city and this city? Maybe the road is like that, yeah? So this is what we call distance. But what's the displacement between these two cities? Straight. The shortest. This is delta x. But this is distance, we call it d. OK? So here we're talking about displacement, the shortest. Now, if you put values down, let's say x1 is plus 3, x2 minus 4. And say we're doing it in meters, yeah? So how much is delta x from 1 to 2? Delta x equal x final minus x initial. x final is minus 4 minus of the formula plus 3. So how much is it? Minus 7 meters. Minus 7 meters. The 7 is the value. What does the minus mean? Direction. It means you are pointing to the left. You're moving to the left. So minus means left, towards left. Look here. You started here, you finished here. Yeah. So you're pointing for you to the left. Yeah. Now what if you start at x3, which is minus uh, 1, and you finish at x2. So here, from x3 to x2. So what is your start? What's your start? No, x3. Finish. So when I write this as a delta, I say delta x. What does that mean? X2 minus x3. It's not that you always have the order 1, 2, 3, 4. No. Initial, final. So final minus? What is the x2 minus 4? Minus another minus 1, yeah? So it's minus 4 plus 1 minus meter. What does this mean? To the, to the left as well. And can you see here? It's, it's, it shows that you are starting at a point. Where is your start? X3. Where is your end? X2. So you are going this way, to the left. Minus. Heading left. So in summary, displacement delta x could be positive, could be negative. negative. Positive means to the right. Negative means to the left. OK. Is it possible that delta x is equal to 0? Yes. Possible. So what does it mean, delta x equal to 0? It means two things. Now, now, if I'm standing here, 
and the zero is the wall. The zero is the reference, yeah? And from the wall to here, let's say one, two, three. I'm at plus three. Start, I'm starting now. Then I stop the watch. What is my final position? Same? So what is delta x? Initial and final are? So my initial position is this. I started the watch or the clock, and then after five, six seconds, I stopped the watch. What happens to my position? Changed? So x initial, x final are the same. So when you subtract them? Three minus three, five minus five, or minus five, minus minus five, it's still zero. Huh? Wherever you are, so this is the first scenario. Delta x is equal to zero means no motion. Yes? That's one possibility. But is this the only possibility? No. What is the other possibility, Zainab? OK, if you start at a point, move wherever you want, the right, left, and then finally you are on the same position. So what is your x initial? Same as? So what is delta x? But did I move or not? So possible. So the other meaning of delta x equal to 0, back to the same position, which means x initial equal x final, but with motion. All right? So it's possible that you are moving. So in conclusion, displacement could be positive. If you are pointing to the right, be careful. When I say pointing to the right, it doesn't mean x is positive. Initial or fine, no, it just means you are heading, right? Or that the x is negative, it doesn't mean you are on the negative side of the reference. No, it just means you are pointing to the so you could be on the positive side, but you are pointing to the left. Or you could be on the negative side, and you are pointing. Or, no, you are on the left, and you're pointing to the left. And on the right, you're pointing to the right. Possible. So delta x could be positive, negative, and zero. We have two possibilities, no motion or motion, which takes you back to the same position. So this is the story about position. And what else? Displacement, change in position. Now, when I change my position, I start here, x1, finish there, x2. What is this? Delta x, yeah? Now, what happens? I started at time 1. I finished at time. So this is a time difference, yeah? Now, if I divide the, distance, uh, the displacement over the time taken, this will give me what is called average velocity, not speed. Average velocity. So now we define average velocity. And the symbol we use for velocity is V, and v, AV means average. So how do we find average velocity? If we divide this placement over the time taken, this will give me average velocity. Displacement or what? Change in position means the same thing. Huh? You could say displacement or change in position. So now, let's put it symbolically. V average 
average velocity equal to delta x over delta t. Or delta x means x final minus x initial over t final minus t initial. Okay, displacement over time, not distance over time. This is average velocity. I didn't say speed or average speed, velocity. Now, what's the unit of average velocity? Delta X measured either meters, kilometers, yeah? And this is time, so it could be meter per or kilometer per hour. This is the unit, the dimension. Now, if I want to define average, velocity, but based on the mathematics, on calculus. What is this d over d, yes? Uh, sorry, delta over delta, not d over. Delta variable over another delta of a variable. What do we call that in calculus? Uh, yes, that's one meaning, slope. Not d, delta. What is the other meaning of delta? No, it's not the It's called the average rate of change. Average rate of change. So when you have delta over delta, it means you are finding the average rate of change of something with something, yeah? Like, you can find this function. Uh, the height of a person with the, with the age, yeah? So what are the variables? Time and height, maybe t with y. Yeah? So you can find, you can say that what is the average rate of change of length, uh, height with time, average. Okay, but of course this function will work up to a limit. After that, it's not like you just grow taller and taller, yeah? it works. So that's called the average rate of change. Here, what does it mean average rate of change of what? What is my function here? Position with? So my function here is xt function, x with time. Position as a function of? So what we define average velocity in words? We say is the rate of, uh, the average rate of change of position with time. So you can write it. The Average rate of change with time. Okay. That's the definition in words. Mathematically, this is the definition. But it's average rate of change. Now, The next thing because this is average rate of change it means I cannot describe the motion in details I just know what happens on average why I just know what happens on average because how do you find the average velocity you just had information about the x initial and maybe x final, yeah? And t initial, and? So the object which moved from initial to final started here, towards this point, left. Think of a car, initially here, at this time. Finally, at this position, at this time. Can you tell me what happens between this point and this point? What happens to the car? What happens to the velocity of the car? You don't know. There are many possibilities. The first possibility that the car started here and finished here at the same velocity. No change. Like you put the cruiser on, yeah? 
So no change. Eh? Or no. Between these two points, sometimes you speed up, sometimes you slow down, or you stopped, or you turn back, and then again. So when I use this formula, will it include these changes here? No. I don't know. So when you don't know and you just have information at start and finish, you say, um, I can uh, calculate something which is an average, represent the whole thing, but not in details. So when you have initial and final uh, information only, you're talking about averages, yes? Not details. So that's why we call it average velocity. We don't call it velocity. Now we talk about the next one, which is what is the velocity? Not what is the, like when the car moved from initial position to final position, I want to know at this position somewhere here at X, uh, if I change the initial two numbers, one, two, this is initial and final. Here, let's say at point T3, at position three, T3, T1, T2, yeah? Now, the question is this. What is the velocity when the car was at 3 or at T3? How many points do I have here? So I cannot talk about averages. Averages when you have start and finish. But at a point, it's not an average. Like this class. You have, let's say you have uh, grades in exams, yeah? Some of you A, some of you B, C, D, F, yeah? So what is the average of the class? It means you just know the overall, yeah? Maybe the average of the class is C. But does that mean she got a C? Maybe she got a C or A or B plus or an F, yes? So when I point to a point, I'm not talking about average. I'm talking about a specific here. So I don't say, what is your average? I say, what is your grade? But when I talk about the class, what's the average of the? Now, same here. When you have information from start, to end, start and end only, you're talking about average velocity. But when I ask you about the details, what is the velocity at start? What is the velocity at three? What's the velocity at two? Then we are not talking about average velocity. We're talking about what's called an instantaneous velocity. So here, the second title is instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity. In instantaneous velocity, we give it the symbol V as well, but I N. Instantaneous, short. Later on, during the course, we are not going to use the word instantaneous anymore. We just say, what is the velocity? But we mean, what is the instantaneous? But if I want average, no, I say, what is the average? Velocity. But just for the time being, I'll repeat the word instantaneous just to get used to it, and then we remove it from there. So instantaneous velocity V instantaneous, yeah? And this is the, as a definition, it's not the average rate of change. It's the? And calculus. You have two rates of change. Two rates of changes, yeah? The first one, you call it average rate of change. The second one? the instantaneous rate of change. You had two average, yeah? So if I'm talking about velocity, velocity depends on xt function, yeah? Position with time. So when you say instantaneous velocity, you mean instantaneous rate of? Of what? Position with time. Instantaneous rate of change of position with? So average uh, instantaneous velocity 
V instantaneous, we define it as the instantaneous rate of change of position with time. The instantaneous rate of change of position with time. So if I want to write it mathematically, if you say delta over delta, that's average. But if you want to say instantaneous in, in mathematics, it becomes dx over dt. This is an instantaneous rate of change of position with time as a definition. Now, mathematically, what is the other meaning of instantaneous rate of change? Derivative. So this means derivative of what? Xt function. So if you have an Xt function, you derive it. It becomes what? An instantaneous velocity. So dx over dt, it means the derivative of a function, of xt function. That's one meaning. What is the other meaning? Remember here, we average? Two meanings. What was the first meaning, so one of you said? The slope, yes? Slope of what? But usually slope of a line, yes? Which line? Secant line, secant line between two points on a graph. So here, uh, later on, I'll, talk, I'll put it as a function. I don't want to get into that. But remember, slope here, slope, usually use it for a line, yes? Slope of a line. You need two points on the line, yeah? But which line here we mean? A line which connects two points on the graph of xt. And this line is called the secant line. So here, V average, I can say is the slope of the secant line in xt graph. So if you have xt function, xt graph, the slope of the secant line between two points is the average velocity. Here, we said derivatives, yeah? What is the other meaning? Slope of the tangent line at a point on what xt graph. So if you have xt graph and you want to find the instantaneous velocity, what do you have to do? At that point, draw a tangent line and the slope of it is the velocity instantaneous. Yeah. I just put a graph here, and I'll come back to it maybe later on. If I have time position function, this is in meter, this is in second. And let's say the xt function, the function, not the motion. Remember the motion in one dimension, yeah? It doesn't mean here you see a line, no. This is a function, how x changes with? Let's say x changes with time like this. This function, yeah? OK? And let's say this, is, uh, this point is t1, which means it's x1. And this is final position, x2, and final time. OK? Now, if I ask you this question, what is the average velocity when the object moves from T1, from x1 to x2. When I ask you this, mathematically, it means find the average velocity, yes? Which means you have to know x initial, x final, t initial, t final. You just have t initial, x initial, t final, x final. The other meaning, graphically, means the slope of the secant line. Where is the secant line here? It's the line which connects point one to 
So if I draw a, a secant line, a line which cuts through these two points, this is called the secant line. So the slope of this line represents average velocity. I, but it's the same meaning. I mean, just you take x2 minus x1 over t2 minus, it's what? Average velocity. This is the average velocity. Now, what does it mean in instantaneous velocity? Here, the, you don't have x1, x2. You just choose one point. One. Suppose I want to know uh, the velocity at t3 here. At this point, which is x3 here. So how do I find graphically? How do I find the instantaneous velocity at this point? I have to draw a tangent at this point. Look, a tangent. That's just touching. A tangent line. Now, what is the instantaneous velocity here? It's equal to... The slope of the tangent line equal V instantaneous, where? At 3. Got it? So if you draw tangent to the curve, this is instantaneous velocity. If you draw secant, it becomes average. When do you use secant? If you have a start and finish. When do you use tangent of one point or one, one point time or position. Okay, that's mathematics. <clears throat> so we have now we define average velocity and instantaneous velocity. Uh, probably later on I'll tell you why this is true, where we got this one from, but for the time being just we define them. Now the third definition. Average speed, not average velocity, average, and the symbol is capital S A V. Average speed. So I want to define average speed. Now, why we have two words? We have the word velocity and we have the word speed. When you talk about positions and change in position, remember we said we have a sign, negative or positive. We have directions, yeah? So when we have directions described in the motion, we are talking about velocity, average or instantaneous, because it has a sign, right, left. But when you don't want to take in consideration the direction, you start talking about speed or average speed, yeah? So how do I define average speed? If I take you back to the example here, but I remove T3, I just say initial and final. You started here, X1, you finish at X2, yeah? Now, when I say x2 minus x1 over t2 minus t1, this is average velocity. But let's say this is what happens. You started here. In reality, you didn't go straight to 2. But you are still moving on straight line. You are not going on. So let's say you started here. When you reach this point, you say, oh, I forgot something. I'll go back. And then, no, 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 I changed my mind, and I go to the end. Of course, this is motion a straight line, but I'm opening the motion so you can see it. I cannot draw it on the same line. So here you're going this way, this way, this way. Yeah? What's the difference between the red and the blue line? The first one, we call it displacement, the shortest, straight. The second one, distance is not the shortest. So the blue one is distance. 
But the red one is displacement. Are they the same? Not necessarily. But what is the distance if you go straight? Equal to, Equal to displacement, yeah? So it's possible that distance and displacement, if there is no turning, you don't change your mind, you stay on the same line. But if you change your mind, then the distance and displacement are not equal. So you have to know if you have turning points or not, to know that distance and displacement are not equal. So now, if I say, if I divide the distance moved, not the displacement, the shorter, the distance moved over the time taken, what I get? Average, average speed. So what is average speed? Distance over time taken. So it's not delta x anymore. Delta x gives, gives you position, 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 but distance is not position. So we define it as this way. S average equal distance, I use D. Over time taking, we say delta D, eh? uh, delta T. But delta T, remember time is always a delta. Even if you just put T. When I say the time is five seconds, what does that mean, five seconds? It means from zero, T1. So when I say five, from zero. So it's a delta as well. So what I'll put here, instead of saying del D over delta T, I can say D over T. But remember, T means delta. Same. So average speed, distance over, and the unit is meter per second. Now, what's the difference now, the major difference between average speed and average velocity? What's the, ma the major difference is that average uh, speed is always positive because distance is always, and time is always positive. So you don't have a speed which is negative. You can't say the speed is minus 50 kilometer per hour or plus. It's always an absolute positive, yeah? But average velocity, it depends on delta x, yeah? Could be to the right or to the left, positive or? So this is always positive, but average velocity, sometimes positive, sometimes negative, sometimes zero, okay? What else? Can I say S average equal to V average? No. This is generally speaking. Why? Because distance is not equal to displacement. Distance is not equal to, generally speaking. But if it happens in the question that you know that the distance and displacement are equal, then this is possible, yeah? Then average speed and average velocity are equal but in magnitude. You need an absolute value. Okay, because this has a sign, this has no sign. So this could be negative. Then you can't say negative equal positive. But the values, maybe they are equal because this one, so here I need an absolute value as well for the delta x. Yeah? But anyway, generally speaking, those are not equal. But a special, uh, there's a special case. What's the special case? If the object doesn't turn. So you can write it down this note. Distance is not equal to displacement generally. So average velocity is not equal to average speed, generally speaking. In one case, when the, there is no turning point in the motion, then distance and displacement are equal. Now, what do you expect next after this average speed? Remember we had average velocity and velocity. Now, average speed and instantaneous speed. So here we have instantaneous speed. And this is S-I-N. 
Now, what I define in instantaneous velocity, rate of change of position with time or the derivatives of function x t, OK? And this is at one point. Now, when I say instantaneous speed, what do I mean? I mean the speed at one point as well. Regardless, you do turning or you don't do, I say, what's the speed here at this point? Or what's the speed here? What's the difference between saying what's the velocity here and what's the speed here? It's the, both of them are the same, except that one gives you direction, the other one doesn't. So when I say what's the speed, you are looking at the speedometer. You are not looking at the road. But when I say, what is your velocity now? You look one eye on the speedometer, the other eye on the direction. Right or left, yeah? That's the only difference. So when it comes to calculate instantaneous speed, do you have a function? Do you have a formula? Your formula is instantaneous velocity, but remove the minus, the absolute value. No function, no formula for instantaneous speed. So I say instantaneous speed is equal to absolute value of instantaneous velocity. So here we say instantaneous speed is equal to absolute value of instantaneous velocity. This is your formula. Which means each time I ask you what is the speed, you change the question to what? What is the velocity, but remove the sign. Don't complicate it. But when I say what is the average velocity, uh, speed, no. Distance over time. Good. Now we cover the four, yes? Instantaneous average velocity, instantaneous average speed. You can see here it, it was based on distance and displacement position. Now, the next thing is that at point one, T1, I have position number one. Now, at point one, don't I have instantaneous velocity? The velocity at one only. So, at V1. V1 means instantaneous at one. At two, V2, instantaneous. These are, when I say one and two, I mean instantaneous at one, instantaneous at. Now, when the car moved from one to two, this instantaneous could change or not? Yes. Or it stays the same, yes? If it stays the same, then there is no change in velocity. But if the value changes, there is a change in Okay, now if you have a car and you want to change the velocity, what do you have to do? Physically, what do you do? Now, what do you do in the car to? Accelerate, which means you uh, uh, press on the accelerator, yeah? That's why you call it accelerate. What does the accelerator do? Changes the speed. That's when you just look at the speed. And velocity as well, because you might as well, yeah? So what we have to define now? Average acceleration, not acceleration, because you're talking about start, finish. You don't know what happens to the velocity between one and two. Whenever you have start and finish, it's always an average. You can't be sure, you're not sure. So we talk about average acceleration. And the symbol for acceleration is small a, and because it's an average, av. Average acceleration. So what do I have here? This time, let's say this is a start, x1, t1. This is x2, t2. If I talk about x2 minus x1, I'm talking about displacement, yeah? But this time, no, I'm saying, at x1, I have v1, instantaneous velocity at 1. 
and x2, I have v2. And from 1 to 2, what happens to the v1? And v, they change, yeah? When I move this way. So if I say, what is the average acceleration? What do I mean? What is the rate of change of what? Velocity with time. Over that's the math, yeah? But with time. But again, I said, so what you say? The average rate of change of velocity with? So as a definition, this is the average rate of change of what? Velocity, not position. With time. The average rate of change of velocity with time. But now, mathematically, what is A average equal to? Delta V, the change in velocity over delta T. The change in velocity over time, average rate of change. Or it means V final, V initial over T final, T initial. This is the formula for average acceleration. So in acceleration, you need velocity or position? Velocity. Change in velocity. But for velocity, you need change in position. The unit, velocity is meter per second over a second becomes meter per second squared. So the final unit will be meter per second square. This is the formula. Again, remember why we say average acceleration? Because I don't know what happens between these two points. So I'm not sure about the acceleration. I'm sure about the overall acceleration. I have a start and finish informations only. No informations between start and finish. Now, V, velocity, not speed. Change in velocity. V1 has a sign, yes? Could be positive, could be like negative. V2 as well, could be positive, could be negative, because velocity has a sign, direction. So when you say delta V, delta V has a sign as well, yeah? So if delta V has a sign, Positive or negative. What happens to acceleration average? It takes the sign of the delta V, not the sign of V. Be careful. The sign of V doesn't give you the sign of acceleration. The change in velocity sign gives you the sign of acceleration. So here I have possibility. Either delta V is what? Which means the change in velocity is positive. Not the velocity positive, or not the velocity is negative. The difference between them gives you positive. Or it's negative, or what? Zero. Zero. Now let's discuss the last one first. Delta V equal to zero, what does that mean? The average, there is no change in there? which means the acceleration average is zero. zero. So when you have an acceleration equal to zero, when there is no change in velocity, which means initial velocity and final velocity, constant. When you have constant, so when delta V equal to zero means V final equal V initial, and it means constant velocity. So constant velocity means acceleration equal zero. Now here, do I have acceleration? Yes, positive. So what's the acceleration here? Positive. Because time is always positive. 
So the sine of A depends on the sine of delta V. When delta V is negative, means acceleration average is? OK, now here we want to discuss this. What does it mean, the acceleration negative? What does it mean, the acceleration positive? This is one of the things she mentioned here. She said it's increase or? OK, and this is the wrong conclusion. <clears throat> because the sign here is not like for the something increasing or decreasing. We define the sign. Direction. The sign here means direction, left and right. It doesn't mean increase or decrease. So when I say the acceleration is positive, what do I mean? The acceleration towards right, not the motion towards right. Be careful. Motion towards right means the velocity to the right, but not necessarily the acceleration is to the right. The acceleration sign doesn't depend on velocity. It depends on the change velocity. velocity. This is a common mistake. If, you th if your velocity is positive, you think that the acceleration is positive. If the velocity is negative, the acceleration is? This is the wrong conclusion. OK, so velocity and acceleration sign are not the same. Sometimes they are the same, sometimes not. Yeah? So when I say acceleration is positive, I mean the acceleration direction to the right. Acceleration negative, acceleration direction to the left. Zero, there is no acceleration. <clears throat> now, what next comes after average acceleration? An instantaneous acceleration, which we call, call it acceleration. And this is A sub I n. Based on what I told you about average velocity and instantaneous velocity, what can you tell me? What is instantaneous acceleration equal to? This was delta over delta, yes? Gave you average. When you say instantaneous, it's not delta. It's what? D over D. So acceleration instantaneous, we define it as dv over dt. And what does dv over dt mean? Derivative. Derivative of what? A vt function, not xt function. Derivative of velocity as a function of time, this function. So when you have a velocity time function, derive it. It gives you acceleration, instantaneous. What is the other meaning of dv over dt mathematically? S slope of the? Of what? Vt graph. Vt graph. So this means slope of the tangent line in a velocity time graph. So if this is the case, what do you call this now? Delta V over delta T. Slope of what? Of secant line in V T graph. Which means, if you have a VT graph, this is T, this is V meter per second, and let's say you have this function, VT graph, yeah? <clears throat> let's say this is T1, what is this now? V1, and it's instantaneous at one. And let's say this is T2, so this will be V2. What does it mean delta V over delta T graphically? Secant line, which means if you draw a secant between this point and this point, the slope of the secant line equal what? Average. Acceleration, the slope of it. And slope is like 
Delta over delta, which is this, delta V over delta T, points. Here, what's the question? What's the instantaneous at where, maybe at this point? A three here. Yeah. So how you find how you find the? Let me make the graph a little bit clearer here. At this point, you have to draw a tangent line here. Here, what you or let me put the sign this sign. Here we say what slope of the tangent line is equal to what? Acceleration instantaneous at this point, at this point. So you always have secant two points, tangent. Secant two points means average. Tangent means instantaneous. So this is uh, the theory behind those. Okay, one more, uh, maybe last thing is, and we'll discuss it later on, I just mentioned it. I said that acceleration sign doesn't necessarily mean it's the sign of velocity. Maybe. So acceleration positive means the acceleration to the right. Acceleration negative means acceleration to the left, but that doesn't mean velocity to the right, velocity to the left, or motion to the right, motion to the left. The acceleration direction. So we'll go, come to that in details next time I see you. I have to stop now, thank you very much.